No, wait, we're not starting yet. Hold on, hold on. Hey everybody, it's Dave and Olive. We're here to do the January wrap up. Hey everybody, it's Dave and Olive. Hope everyone's doing well. We're here to review the books that we read in January. Let's get started. Okay, so the first book we read in the month of January is Gardens of the Moon by Steven Erickson. This is the first book in a 10 book series of ta the Tale of the Malazan, Book of the Fallen. Everybody calls it the Malazan series for short. This is, uh, there's 10 books in the main series. Um, it's an epic fantasy series. This is the shortest one in the series. Um, this one, the uh, mass paper book, ver mass paperback version is like 650 pages. Some of them get up to like about 1300 pages. Um, reason I'm reading this one is because I've always wanted to do an epic fantasy series, but I'm a pretty slow reader. So I'm intimidated by long books to begin with. Uh, so I'm certainly intimidated by a really long series of long books. And, uh, I, you know, the reason I finally decided to do this one is, like I said, I've always wanted to do it. And it just so happened that Mike at Mike's Book Reviews was starting a read-along for this. And he's put together a pretty reasonable schedule. It's basically a two-year schedule for the 10 books. So if you're interested in doing it, there's still time. I'll leave Mike's channel below. Uh, we just started in the beginning of January. And so it's a two-year schedule, so you don't have to read every month, and it gives you plenty of time to read. You know, you can read a book over several months, so you can read plenty of other stuff along with it. And he's got a couple of hundred people signed on to this. He calls it the War Band. A couple hundred people signed on, including veterans who will be along for the ride, reading it uh, second, third time to help for the compute everybody else with the confusing parts. And so it seemed like a great opportunity to do it. Uh, I'd probably never do it if I didn't do something like this. Um, it'll keep me disciplined. There'll be help along the way. And uh, like I said, it's a reasonable schedule. So uh, I'm pretty excited about it. This series, if you look at, for, at top fantasy epic series, you know, this, the Malazan series is going to be on most of those lists. A lot of people think it's the best epic fantasy series. Uh, but a really good thing about it is that this series is done. I think Erickson completed it about... Uh, 10 years ago. So the main series, 10 books, and it's not like, so it's not like uh, Wheel of Time where Jordan died before he finished and somebody else had to wrap it up, or uh, Game of Thrones, which, you know, is never going to finish. Um, this series is done and complete. Uh, he, you know, Erickson has a partner who is, uh, who helped him create this world. Well, this world, I think, is based on a um, original GURPS a campaign or game, you know, some, uh, a Dungeons and Dragons type game role playing, and Erickson's partner in that uh, has written a lot of uh, books, isolated stories, you know, in between, and uh, there's some prequels now, and so there are other books. It's still going. There are other books that you could read in the series, but the the original ten ser ten book series, which Erickson recommends that you read first. Uh, that's been long complete, so you, you, you know you'll be able to finish the main series. So it's got, like I said, it's been done. Uh, this series has been done for about 10 years, uh, but it's only recently started to get a lot of hype, especially on BookTube. Um, there's been a number of people um, that have been doing a lot of talking about it. Iskar Jarak has a, a Malazan channel that's you know, devoted to the series. Uh, Daniel Green, who does a lot of fantasy, has had a, done a lot of talking about this, um, you know, group discussions, interviewed Steven Erickson and all. And so there's a number of channels, I'll, I'll put them below, that have been talking about this series a lot and really hyping it up. So a lot of people are, are really excited about this now. So I was pretty excited about this. So this is my big read for the month. And uh, I was really, really excited and to lead up to this starting. Okay, it's the morning of Thursday. January 7th. Olive is having her uh, early morning nap after having breakfast, as is her sister Riley. Uh, just having our uh, morning coffee, waiting to take uh, 
my daughter to school, and we are about to start the first book in the Malazan series, Gardens of the Moon, first of ten for the main series of the Tale of the Malazan, Book of the Fallen. Uh, starting a little bit late. I should have started on January 1st, so I'm a little behind schedule on this, but I think we can still get this done in January. So, um, Gardens of the Moon by Steven Erickson. About to start the first, first book. Now these ashes have grown cold. We open the old book. Ah, what an apropos start. You know, Olive and I were both pretty excited about it, so uh, it did cause, you know, it takes a while to read. So, um, you know, with the two of us, it caused a little bit of, a few problems along the way. You can read it when I'm done. So this book is a little hard to explain what it's about. It's not your traditional, it's, um, you know, dragons and dwarves, sword and sorcery fantasy. It's, um, it's quite a bit more complex and there's a lot of originality to it. So this book is known for being a little confusing. It's not your traditional fantasy story where you start off meeting a young protagonist and you see how they get their start and watch their evolution and that sort of graduates into the full-blown story of how they become a hero and um, this there is a lot of characters um, you can see this the character list goes on for pages there was a lot of cool characters in this a lot of different races and not your traditional you know elf, dwarf, gnome, a lot of different new races, some ancient, some newer. There was gods involved, different kinds of creatures. Again, not your traditional ones, you know, great ravens, these massive hounds, and um, new, cool new concepts where you're traveling through warrens and these sort of, um, which are kind of unclear what they are. Everybody re retreats into these and meets gods in these and all, all different gods, elder gods and newer gods involved in the story. And uh, it's just um, it's re very, very original, huge cast of characters, um, just kind of takes a while to wrap, wrap your head around it. And yet I think you have to get a little more than one book in order to fully do that. Uh, there's a an empire that's waging a war against all these different cities and there's all these different groups of characters. There's a, um, a group called the Bridge Burners that were uh, for the Empire. There's a group um, of Phoenix Inn characters, which is a collection of, collection of friends with different abilities that, that are set in the city where most of the action takes place in the book. And a lot of different, lot of different races, a lot of different groups, a lot of different individuals, and you kind of just get dropped in the middle of this massive war that's going on without any clue what's happening. And, you know, there's a lot of terms thrown around. You know, for a while I had just really was having a lot of trouble following what was going on. Um, would have helped if I had realized before I was three-fifths the way through the book that there's a big glossary in the back, you know, with a lot of terms in it, you know, for the beginning there's this place where one race comes from called Moonspawn and talks about it moving and describe features of it and I was like what, what is this thing I thought it was a mountain and I thought it was a moon and I had no idea and then well eventually when I found the glossary I found it it's actually like a flying mountainous fortress and so yeah it would have been nice to know that for the first three-fifths of the book so if you read this make sure you remember there's a glossary in the back and refer to that as you go through it but uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's known for being a little confusing. Most people's reactions, I think, to this book are that it was good, but I'm a little confused when, they, when you reach the end. And that was basically my take on it. It was good, but I was a little bit confused. Um, but, uh, you, you know, it helped knowing that going in. That's kind of everybody's feeling about it, and supposedly it gets better. Um, and, uh, you know, this, like I said, because it was a little confusing, a little hard to follow, I would probably give this one a, a four stars because I did enjoy it. Um, but I'm, I'm still a little confused, but I'm certainly going to keep going. And, um, and uh, yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited to keep going with this. So um, 
you know, the next one is, I uh, won't be reviewing the next one right away because as I said, I don't, we don't have to read it right away, but you'll see that one probably um, in two, two months from now. Okay, the second book we read in January is To Be Taught If Fortunate by Becky Chambers. So this is a science fiction novella. Uh, I read this because a while back I read an, uh, another book by Becky Chambers, her first book, I think, called um, The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, um, which is part of her Wayfarer series, which now has, I think, like four books in it. And I kind of like that book, but I didn't love the book. Um, that was a, I probably gave that one a 3.5 stars. And um, it was entertaining, but it was, you know, kind of, I thought, kind of a meandering plot. And so um, I wasn't going to read more in that series. Um, but I did like it enough that I figured I would give her, now that she published this new book, to give her, a, a, give it another chance. And so um, this one, um, I would probably, again, give about a 3.5 stars. Um, and... Uh, I think for the same reason. I think it was um, it was kind of entertaining, but again, it was kind of um, a little bit of a meandering plot, I guess. What this is about is it's it's told from the perspective of one of uh, one of the astronauts. It's in a team of astronauts that is um, on a long mission to visit four habitable planets, and there's a new technology called semaforming, which enables them to change their biology a little bit as they go to each of these new planets so that they can explore them and they can explore what kind of life is on those planets. And it's really, the, 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 it's really, the story is really more of, um, of the main character really being kind of reflective about um, nature and, and science and society. And um, so it's really more from that perspective and not really too much in, in terms of a plot, which, which was fine. It was, you know, it was, it was okay. Um, but again, it's, um, it, the, the, the plot I thought left a little bit, something to be desired. So again, I probably, while I somewhat enjoyed it, I probably only give it a 3.5 stars because, um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't great. So, okay. The next book we read in the month of January is Astrophysics for People in a Hurry by Neil deGrasse Tyson. Neil deGrasse Tyson, as you may know, is one of the biggest popularizers of science today. Uh, he runs the Hayden Planetarium at the American Museum of Natural History in New York. Um, he's been on a number of different shows, the modern version of Cosmos and on the Science Channel, and he's written a number of books. Um, and uh, he's, he's, like I said, he's done a great job in terms of popularizing science. And he, he's very funny and witty, too. He's a very charming uh, scientist. Olive actually picked out this book. Um, she wanted us to read this this month. Originally, I assumed it's because, you know, she's always in a hurry. But according to her, um, she says it's just because she wanted to bone up on her science, and in particular, her astrophysics. Olive, are you reading all those books? That's a lot of physics books, Olive. Are you really reading all those? Okay, but what if we take the cosine of x? You don't think that'll work? And then we divide it by the sine of x? No? Oh, well, I don't know. But in any event, we read this book and um, I really wanted to love this book um, because I really, really like Neil deGrasse Tyson in particular. Um, so I was really hoping to love it a little bit more. Um, it was okay. It was I, I maybe because um, you know he he does try to do it in a hurry. You know he covers a bunch of 
a bunch of different basic topics um, relating to, you know, um, to physics and the cosmos. And um, I guess maybe a lot of it wasn't, new. one of my degrees is in physics. I guess a lot of it wasn't really new to me. And, um, uh, you know, he was, he, he was going kind of quick. I thought the writing was a little too fast on some of the topics. And even though I've already been exposed to these things, I still sometimes was finding myself reading pages over because it was kind of just kind of dealt with something quick and then tried to, you know, make some jokes. And I don't know, I just thought stylistically um, uh, w wasn't the best for me, but um, but it was still a good book. Um, probably a good introduction to astrophysics for a lot of people if you've never been exposed to any of it before. And so I'd probably give this uh, 3.5 stars. Um, want to make sure last year I was appalled to see that I basically didn't do any nonfiction last year, which I couldn't believe. So I uh, want to make sure we remedy that this year and so want to make sure we got one in in the month of january and we'll definitely be doing some more okay because i couldn't not read some horror in the month of january the next thing we read was the yellow wallpaper by charlotte perkins gilman this is this doesn't even qualify as a novella i don't think it's a sh short story really um as you can see, it's very short. You can get this in all different kinds of editions. She wrote many stories, and you can get it in, a, in an anthology of different her works. This is just um, this is just that story. Um, I, I read this because uh, I read a book a few months ago um, called A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay, which I really liked a lot. And that's a, one of my previous reviews. And... In, in that book, one of, the, one of the many cool things about that book was that there was a lot of horror references to old horror, other horror books, movies, um, just a lot of different random horror references. And this was one of the things that was referenced in that, in that book, um, this story, The Yellow Wallpaper. This was published back in 1892, so over, uh, well over 100 years ago. Um, and it's considered a classic. Um, this uh, is a story about a woman that is um, really kind of um, relegated to one room in her house by her husband um, because she's having some mental health issues and there's some yellow wallpaper um, which she becomes obsessed with in that room and um, further um, and it, it further um, facilitates her kind of um, you know, um, descent of her mental condition. I think Charlotte Perkins Gilman is known for writing some feminist literature, and um, I think it's really meant to be a commentary on the treatment of, of, of women um, at that time. And um, I, th I thought it was a pretty interesting story. Um, you know, like I said, it was really short, so it's hard to rate it, but I would probably give it four point, I'd probably give it 4.0 stars. Um, and um, you know, I would recommend reading it. It's very short. It's a little investment, and uh, it was it was it was it was pretty neat. It was a pretty chilling little tale. Okay, and the last book that we read in the month of January is *Exigency* by Michael Simson. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, which I'm going to put right here because that was an audio book. Um, this book's about five years old. Uh, I read this book because uh, I get a daily email called Chirp, which I don't know if uh, everybody's familiar with that, but it's like BookBub, but for audiobooks. And it shows you, it gives you lists, it gives you a couple books each day that are, um, you know, really inexpensive, you know, two bucks, three bucks, five bucks, yeah, which is pretty good pricing for audiobook. And uh, a lot of times, you know, uh, stuff isn't interesting, but sometimes it is. Sometimes a lot of big books, popular books. And so that one looked particularly interesting. This was, uh, you know, it's a science fiction book and it was, it was really good. Um, th I would probably give this one a four, a little more than four stars. Um, so what this book was about, there's a group of scientists that are on a space station very far from, from, from Earth. Um, very long distance contact. They can't even hear from anybody for a long time. This is like a one-way trip mission, pretty much. And they're they're orbiting around this planet that has two early intelligent life forms on it. Um, one is the Threk, which um, it's the best I can tell seem to be sort of a a bipedal cephalopod type of race. And another is um, this group 
called um, this race called the he the Heinka, which are these uh, sort of brutish, very large brutish um, creatures. It seemed to me kind of a crawl, almost like a like a reptilian great ape or hominid or sort of thing. Um, part of the trouble with this book was um, that it was a little hard, despite the descriptions, it was a little hard to actually visualize um, some of these things, including these races. Um, but um, so what happens is right in the beginning, not a spoiler, there's um, there's a something happens up at the space station. So they have to implement this actions and see procedure protocol and they have to abandon the space stations unexpectedly. And so um, it, it, you know, it, it's a story basically of first contact and, and of course things are not, um, you know, the, 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 the people get separated and um, they have different encounters and everything of course is not quite as you, you would think or not as simple as it would seem. And so they, they meet these, you know, developing races and um, it was a pretty, it was a pretty cool story. Um, I would probably give this a little more than four stars. You know, I've said I only give something five stars if, if it does something like, like really, if like the prose is phenomenal or it does something really um, creative or clever um, with, you know, perspective or things like that, or, or if it's an incredibly good story. Um, and so this wasn't any of those things, um, but, um, you know, it was just a, just a, a regular science fiction story, but it was really good. I mean, it was pretty entertaining and it did end, um, a little abruptly. Um, it, it was, you know, it was, it was pretty action packed throughout and then it sort of just fizzled out at the end. Um, and, uh, uh, it was it almost seemed like the author maybe got a little tired. I don't know. Um, so, but oh, oh, like I said, overall it was a good story. Um, just the ending could have been not so abrupt and a little bit stronger. But um, yeah, I, I, I would recommend this. Okay, that's it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified next time we load videos. Hope everybody has a great week and we'll see you next time.